hi everyone welcome to today's tutorial so in this tutorial we're going to discuss how you can integrate uh, these questions that you're seeing on the screen so I'm just going to do them um, a little bit fast but following all the steps okay so if you have not yet subscribed to the channel make sure that you do so by clicking on the subscription button and if you need any assistance in math physics or chemistry feel free to contact me on any of these lines on the screen and um, don't forget to click on this uh, on the what is on the notification button so that you don't miss out the videos that i'm going to be posting okay let's quickly solve the question so integrating this um, function that we've been given here given the limits three and one uh, is very simple so the integral of 2x is simply just 2 and then uh, here x has the power 1. So if we add 1 to x, we're going to have a 2 there and then we're going to divide this 2. Um, we're going to divide the whole function by the new power there. So we have 6, 6 again, 6 initially 6 had x to the power 0. So if we add 1 to 0, we're getting, c, um, we're getting x to the power 1. And the new power there is 1. So if we do this, and we put the upper limit as 3, the lower limit as 1, uh, we can simplify this, and this will become x squared plus 6x. So now we can just put in the limits. So now plugging in the limits, that's where the... That's why you just need to be a bit careful. So you start, you always start with the upper limit and then end with the lower limit. So the upper limit, the upper limit is three. So we just put three where there's x there. So we're going to have three to the power two, then plus six, we put three there. And then the lower limit we subtract uh, the same function, but in this case, I mean this time around we're going to put the lower limit. So we put the lower limit where there's x there. Let me say 6 times 1. So 3 to the power 2, we're getting 9. Plus um, 6 times 3, we're getting 18. Let me say minus 1 squared, that's 1. Plus 6 times 1, that's 6. So 9 plus 18, we're getting 27. 27 minus uh, 1 plus 6, that is 7. So we're getting a 20 as uh, the solution. So 20 is the solution to this um, integral there, that definite integral. So if it was the area that we are finding, we would have added units squared. If it was volume, we say units to the power 3. But in this case, it's just a normal definite integral, so we can just write it without putting the units. Let's quickly move on to the next one. So this one is also straight, and, uh, this one is also straightforward, it's not difficult to answer. So how do we solve such a question? How do we integrate this one? Okay. So integrating this, um, integrating this, uh, th this um, function is also simple. We know to say the integral of e to the power x with respect to x, simply just e to the power x. Then the integral of e to the power 2x uh, with respect to x is simply just 2e to the power x. But of course we have to add k or c this side. Have to add c. So how do you integrate um, an exponential function? You simply just differentiate the power. So when you differentiate 2x, you're getting 2. This is the 2 that I've written here. And then multiply it by the original function, which is e to the power 2x. This is what I did here. 2 times e to the power x. So we're going to do the same even on this expression. So I'm going to in, uh, differentiate the power. So if I differentiate the power, if you differentiate negative x, you're getting negative 1. Then I'll multiply this negative 1 with the original function, which is e to the power negative x. And then of course, this is supposed to be, um, supposed to be uh, calculated or evaluated over uh, a certain interval, which has been given in, in form of limits so um, this is just e to the power negative I mean negative e to the power negative x 
then the limits are negative infinity and zero. So when you put negative infinity where there's x there, it's just the same as saying uh, finding the limit as e, um, uh, the limit of e to the power negative x. So we say negative one this side. And say so finding the limit. Okay, let me not put negative one. Let me just write it as negative e. Yeah. So we say negative e. So the limit of negative e to the power negative x as x approaches negative infinity then this is the upper limit this this is for the upper limit and for the lower limit we say minus then what there is uh, x we replace zero so if we replace zero there any number raised to the power zero is one so we have a negative there outside um, i mean yeah we have a negative on e so this is the negative i'm going to write here and then e to the power e to the power negative zero which is just the same as e to the power zero there so this will give us the limit uh, I can put a negative outside the limit of e to the power x as x approaches negative infinity this is negative x and then we say e to the power zero that's one so negative one here we're going to have negative then negative one brackets so this can be simplified further to the limit of e to the power negative x is a minus this side as x approaches negative infinity then negative times negative one positive one okay so this is exactly how you can simplify this limit yeah so let me just write it properly here so we can say the answer is one minus the limit of e to the power negative x as x approaches negative infinity so this is the solution all right so let's quickly move on to the last part which i said i'm going to explain um, um uh, i'm going to explain yeah so this one uh, the integral of sine to the power three uh, x dx can also be written as the integral of sine squared x sine x dx but of course we know to say sine squared x is an even number um, yeah sine squared x is an even number so since uh, not really an even number I mean 2 here the power that we have on sine here is an even um, power so since it's an even power we're going to use uh, the Pythagorean identity so if it's not even or if what you have here is even and what you have e here is also even then you have to use the cosine identity and then if you have okay let me just write this rule so that you understand properly so if this power let me just do this so if you have sine uh, n x uh, and then you have something like cos mx if what you have here and there are both even if they are all even then you use the cosine identity and then if m and n are odd if they are odd then you have to use the Pythagorean identity yeah so in this case um, we had something like this uh, I said this can be written as the integral of sine squared x and then sine x and then dx so what I have here is um, what I have here is even and then this is odd so if n and m are all even we use the cosine identity but in this case if one of them I, I made a mistake maybe in talking but if one of them either n or m is odd then you use the Pythagorean identity so when you look at m and n here if we have two there we also have one there we know to say one is an odd number 
So since one is an odd number, meaning we are using the Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So, um, yeah, so we can make uh, sine squared x the subject. So we're going to have sine squared x as the subject, so this will be 1 minus cos squared x. And then we can replace this where the sine squared x there. So we're going to have something like this. 1 minus cos squared x. Then we're multiplying this with sine uh, x, which is this one there. Then we say dx. So we can multiply sine x times 1 there. We're getting the integral of uh, sine x. Then sine x times cos squared x. We're getting cos squared x then sine x and dx outside so integrating sine x will result or it will give us when you integrate sine x when you integrate sine x the answer is negative cos x then when you integrate this part integrating this part is simple if you have anything that is in the format cos n um, cos n x sine x and then you've been told to integrate this. The solution is simply just um, the solution is simply just cos n plus one over n plus one. Of course, there's supposed to be x there, and then a negative outside there. And then if you, if you had sine, if sine is the one that had the power there, then the solution is going to be. Let me just erase this part. Okay. So if sine is the one that has the power, then you have cos with the power 1. Um, then if you've been told to integrate this, you're going to say sine n plus 1 x over n plus 1. So this is what you're going to have. So now in this case, we have cos having the power. So meaning we have this minus here. So I'm going to write it there then we open the brackets so since cos is having the power then this is going to be uh, cos it's going to be cos uh, 2 plus 1 there to give us 3 then we have x there then over the new power which is 3 then um, plus c but of course there's always supposed to be a negative in front of cos there so writing this properly this will give us cos cubed x over 3 because this minus times that minus it will give us a positive then we say minus which is this part minus uh, cos x then plus c so this is the solution to this question so let's take a look at some more examples on this same type of question so sometimes we can be given a question like this one how do you solve such a question simple so we know that cos is the one that is having the power and then sine is um cos is the one that ha that is having a, a what is the biggest power and then sine is having a small power there so w what we do is we can okay let me just copy the question so um integrating this are uh, looking at the identities that I uh, mean looking at the equations that I showed that, that I showed you um, what you have to do here is just to add 1 to the power 5 there so you're going to have cos uh, to the power 6 because 5 plus 1 this is going to give you 6 and then you put x there and then over 6 but because it's cos you add a negative and then you say plus 6 so this is the end of this question let's look at the next one so this one is also simple you have cos to the power 3x and then you also have sine to the power 4x then dx so when you look at this we have this one is odd this one is even so if any of them is odd then you use the Pythagorean identity if both are even then you use um, the cosine identities 
so we're going to use the Pythagorean identity because this one is odd so I'm going to take this same odd number and then I'll divide it into two how am I going to divide this simple this can also be written let me write it this side so this can also be written as the integral of cos x then cos squared x then we have sine to the power 4 x and then dx and then this part here using the Pythagorean identity you can write it as cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x because we know to say sine squared x plus uh, cos squared x should give you 1 so when you just take sine to the other side of the equal sign you are going to remain with cos squared x this side which is here and then this other side you are going to have minus sine squared x which is this part okay so i'm going to replace 1 minus sine squared x at this uh, uh, I mean on this part alright so we're going to have something like this we have cos x then open brackets we have 1 minus sine uh, squared x and then there is sine to the power 4x outside we have sine to the power 4x then we have dx so here's just the matter of multiplying so I'm going to multiply cos x times 1 I'm going to get cos x cos x times sine squared x I'm going to get minus sine squared x cos x and then of course there is this sine to the power 4 outside and then dx so we can uh, further simplify this by multiplying sine to the power 4 to everything in brackets so we have uh, sine to the power so we have sine to the power uh, 4x then minus Sine, four, sine to the power 4 times sine to the power 2 when you are multiplying two numbers with the same base you add the power so we're going to add 2 plus 4 this will give us sine to the power 6x then we have cos x and then dx so this one is now even easier to integrate um, I forgot something here sine to the power 4 times cos x supposed to be supposed to have cos x here So there is also supposed to be cos x. Then we say minus. We have sine to the power 6x cos x. And then we have dx. So what we do here, we can now integrate. So integrating this now is simple. Because we are just going to add 1 to sine. I mean to the power of sine. So if we add 1 to 4, we are getting sine to the power 5x then everything divided by 5 then we say minus we're also adding 1 to 6 so we're going to get um, sine to the power 7x everything over 7 then we say plus c so this is the integral of this question there all right thank you very much for watching today's tutorial so if you have any questions feel free to contact me on any of these lines on the screen and then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also don't forget to click on the notification button so if you have any questions feel free to contact me uh, don't hesitate and you can also join my telegram group where I post all these videos um, in the link just in, uh, in the link that is in the description you can check the description uh, can check the description you find the link or you can simply just um, text me on whatsapp and then i'll add you to the telegram group my name is hamted see you in the next tutorial video shalom shalom